Welcome back to Top Dives. We dive deep into the those moments to push us over the edge only to help us soar higher we're talking about setbacks motivation and those incredible comeback stories i'm fiction boy i'm stream Arcadad. and i'm whiplash wolf and here today, we're going to be talking about failures and successes. Now, cue the music. We all been through through it. We all been through it, right, guys? Oh yeah, sure do. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there was pain through my leg, so it kind of made me stop thinking. <laughs> Oh, that, that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry about it. But anyways, yes, I myself have been through a lot of setbacks in my life and a lot of successes in my life. But I wanted to start off with Whiplash saying, hey, when was the last time, uh, you know, you had to face a huge, fa a huge failure and it can be in and out out of the community. And you can tell us what happened in that life. Again, this had to be in the community. Hmm. Huge failures, um. I'm actually trying to think of any. Normally I just kinda like forget about them. <laughs> I don't really don't try to remember my failures. I mean, you can deal with it one way. You can remember it, you can remember it and make it better, or two, just forget it and then just make it better, but don't remember what you did. Okay. Now what about Things that you did succeed. Why, why don't you? Why don't you talk about that? Um, I know a few years ago, like I've thought about this a few times with the podcast now, about how I just like one day it went like Thanos snap, and my mind was like, "All right, I'm gay now. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to eat healthier and better, and then I was going to make content creation." And I did all that, mm -hmm. which is weird to me still, so. but. It would actually help me with, um, you know, losing weight. It was, I pushed myself to it instead of just, you know, just saying, oh, I'm going to do this. You have to push yourself to actually go, you know, go to the gym because going to the gym is pretty, you know, it's one of those things like you get to, the, like when you go to the gym, you just look at it and you don't want to do it because I can't think right now. <laughs> It's okay. We, <laughs> it's 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 fine. Don't don't when worry about it. it... God, my leg is hurting. I think if, I did too much. Anybody in the comments, if you guys want to help him feel better, make sure you give him a kiss on the boo boo because he needs it. <laughs> it's not boo boo. It's just over like overworking my leg. I'm... People are gonna line up to give you a kiss on your boo boo. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, what about you, Strip? Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, I think my I think my latest and probably one of my biggest failures I've actually dealt with it this year is our project to have a child of our own. I want to be a dad. My husband wants to be a dad as well. And sadly, after doing two embryo transfers, both of them failed and we lost our surrogate mother. So that was a big kick in the nuts. Uh it, it really sucked, honestly, because we spent a lot of time. We did a lot of research. We worked on this project for five years. We spent $80,000, money we don't have. So we're in massive debt. And, you know, the surrogate mother kind of gave up after the second try, even though we had a third one, because she believed, like, she wasn't the one. It wasn't going to work out. And uh, she wanted us to have our last try with another surrogate mother. But here's the thing. When you have only one embryo left, the surrogate mother won't choose you. You need two or three. So whether it would have worked or not, it doesn't matter. She, I believe that she just have, should have tried the third way, the third transfer, like it was supposed to happen, but she backed out. But, you know, she's respecting her contract. She's respecting herself. And our, we really appreciate what she did for us. But... Yeah, we're going to try to rebuild ourselves financially and try again maybe in a year or two and see how it goes. Get this. As you should, man. 
I believe in you. And this time you'll be better prepared for the better outcomes. So keep that in mind. Yes. Yes. I would say, for me at least, like one of my biggest failures was actually uh, maybe last year. Uh, it was when I was taking a college class, and that college class was Fundamental of Communications. And I went in there because I needed it for my gen ed, but that's not important. What sucked about it was that you had that strict teacher that was too picky about everything. You know, that one English English teacher that's just always too picky about everything. That was my teacher. And it didn't really help that I couldn't use my creative mindset to really deliver on speeches that I wanted to do because uh, she believed it was too informal, even though I never spoke informally. But it, it's whatever. Huh? Yeah. Weird. <laughs> okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just <laughs> casually just write a whole speech, and just you know, not consider that, yeah, this is college level, you know, speeches. I get it. You, yeah. yeah, you you get you get one of those professors. I have, I've had one of them before. <laughs> but what I will say is this: now I'm more prepared next time to do some research on my professors before I just jump into the class. <laughs> That is, that's my lesson from that. That's why I didn't, I, I failed that class because of that, because she was too strict. And I, I should have listened to the students who were there at the beginning. I think when you're going to school and stuff, like you want to do stuff to, you know, get good grades and stuff, but you have to remember it's the teacher you need to please, not yourself. So you got to balance these things because if you're too stubborn, and you let your egg ego get in the way, well, it might affect your grade. Even though the teacher may be an absolute idiot or moron, you got to do what they're asking from you if you want to have those grades. That's a good point. Yes, this is why you can't work a full-time job and go to school at the same time, because you might just go insane. I feel like I'm already going insane because I'm doing both of those already. <laughs> Well, it's well, unfortunate it's because that's what you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes All right. life is a joke. <laughs> Alright. Now I wanted to ask you something else, if that's okay. Yes. You go with that? Okay. So, think of a major life goal at which you would like to uh, succeed. What are you willing to do to achieve that success? Ooh, lots of things. Lots of things. What? Uh oh. Uh, you wanna you wanna go into details there, my friend? No, that's illegal. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say to achieve like the goals I want to do is just push your. I, I want to push myself to be able to accomplish the goals I want to do, which is I want to with my job now. I like my job is fine, but I want to go somewhere else to have a better career that makes better money so the mm -hmm. one thing that's always made me like push me to like go make more money is cars that has been my one thing <laughs> so mm -hmm. usually i kind of like base like even though there's more things that's worth you know having in your life besides just cars i value cars a lot so that makes me want to be able to go you know get a better job so i can afford my hobby because it's expensive just like being a furry <laughs> everything we do is expensive so moving yourself up in the, the job world it helps out you know with making yourself happier when you have to like people say that money doesn't buy happiness but it can definitely help Do you think like you, you would want to get like, um, sorry, <laughs> would you like to have a better financial situation to be able to afford your, 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 your hobby with cars? Do you want to get like a bigger house so you can have a bigger garage, have more cars in it? You mentioned having a better job that pays you better and probably brings you less stress, right? Mainly less stress. I mean, I already got my roommates and the house is fine. And cars I have are fine. It's just like, oh, okay. mainly there's stuff. I like modifications to my cars too. And modifications can be expensive depending on what you want to do to it. Good wheels for a car. I okay. think your leg wants attention. <laughs> like, good wheels for a car can roll anywhere between $1,500 to $5,000 depending on what... Mm, brand you go for tires can be between a thousand to 
$2,500 depending on the brand you go for. Suspension modifications, if you want to add more horsepower to the car, and blah, 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 all that stuff. But yes, okay, so I want to, I just want to like get, move myself up in the job world so I can afford mm -hmm. and be happy and be stress free as much as I can yeah. be. And have the dream garage too, I'm guessing too, because that's always fun. I already got one of them. The Corvette's one of them. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I would say what I'm willing to do to make my book succeed is taking in a lot of feedback. Because, you know, even if you make a perfect product, like, you know you did really great in whatever you were doing in that particular writing, you, there's always more to improve on. Because, you know, just because you liked it doesn't mean that um, you can't always improve. Like, I'm, I'm willing to back, back read and reprove everything because eventually, once I'm done with whatever I'm writing, I'm going to have to send that to an editor and they're going to ask me questions. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? So, yeah, it's going to be one of those things where you got to take some time to, even if, like I said, you know, even if it was great, whatever you were doing, and it was successful, right? That doesn't mean that you can just be okay with that. And I can tell you from experience with my husband's book, the editors can be very picky. Syntax, how you phrase your things, your your sentences, the, the ideas you're trying to explain. They'll, they'll be very picky, so you're going to be proud of your work at the end. I'm pretty sure of that. Mm -hmm. um, but on my end, I think one of my, my biggest life goal is something I mentioned earlier. I would like to be a dad at some point. I would ha like to have a legacy. Like The idea of just my life ending and having left nothing behind, it's something that really annoys me. And I've always been told I've been very good with kids. I like to teach them, show them things. Uh, sadly, being gay it's very difficult having a child of our own i mean i could insert like a joke here but i'll try to keep it pg-13 uh, but you know i kind of find it unfair that you know there's these straight couples that you know they get pregnant they get kids and they don't know what to do with it and then they get rid of it or they well they put it for adoption or they get like an abortion while here me and my husband and i were spending eighty thousand dollars on trying to have a child of our own and it doesn't work so mm -hmm. it's it's really difficult. It's frustrating uh, because, you know, we, we could adopt a child instead of going with this whole surrogacy process. But we have a very personal reason why we want to do. And I don't want to waste too much time on it. But basically, if we need to tighten up our belt and eat like peanut butter sandwiches for a year to be able to afford it with our housing market, which is crashing horribly in Canada. Don't buy a house in Canada right now. It's not time. Um, hopefully we'll be patient and we'll work our butt off, but we'll try to get there. A little bit off topic, but we have a whole, he has a whole infinite supply of peanut butter, so he never runs out anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, um, really. but, but I would say from a perspective on maybe other people in the community, I would like to say is... You enjoying yourself? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You should not you're have fine. brought that up. <laughs> That's your fault. You know, I'm, I can own up to it. <laughs> pull out a, I pull out a peanut butter and start like eating it. For people listening, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, They're so good though. I know. But any, but anyways, as I was saying, from the pre from a community perspective, like I would say, one of the sh one of the most things I've noticed is like, yes, that we are part of a furry community where we're supposed to be accepting. But I'm gonna be a little bit controversial here. That's not always the case. Nope. And yeah. I'll say that because I've seen I've seen it where, where furries are trying to find their friend groups and they have been unsuccessful. But don't feel don't fret i've been in that same boat too audience i have been in that same boat now what i would suggest if you were to wanting to succeed in finding your friend group then you actually need to stay in that friend group instead of bouncing around all the time definitely try that and if it doesn't work then you definitely uh remember some of the couple friends that are you know still your friends and work on that and so let's see what goes from there maybe you build your own community in that thing because i i hate to see you know, furries get so discouraged because we're not that much accepting. I think we're accepting to an extent. So just because you failed at one thing, trying to be friends in this group, does not mean you will not be successful in another. You just got to keep trying. 
I'm going to bring up that, a point concerning that. If you're somebody that is struggling to build yourself a friend circle and you're really having a hard time, the first thing I would recommend for these people is listen first, talk after. A lot of people, they talk about themselves because they don't know how to socialize. They're a bit social awkward. They don't know what to do. So start learning, like listening first, ask them question, and eventually they'll ask you back question and now when you'll be talking it will be relevant it will be interesting and if you show a lot of interest in people they will eventually show interest in you and this really worked i i helped a good friend of mine do that and he has been having a very successful so social life what i was gonna say as well is what you said earlier fiction about how people they kind of like jump around between friend groups to be honest, it's not bad to have different friend groups, but always find that one friend group that you can really, really vibe with and just really be yourself around. Because those are the ones that you're going to truly make the best memories with. Whenever you pot, maybe meet up IRL, go to a con together, whatever it may be. Always have like just one friend group that you're just gonna like spend the rest of your life with. Because that's how I did with my IRL friend group I have. I've been with them for 10 years and it's been like what everyone would imagine like having a friend group this from high school or from like elementary to like now. That's how it feels like. I still like, I feels like I've known them for like my entire life. If I could give an example of that inner friend group, it definitely would be what Top Dogs community has because, you know, we have our own inner circle. The podcasters have their inner circle where they can talk about a lot of things that not just Top Dog things, but, you know, things that are even more personal. And um, th that would be the thing. But anyways... <laughs> 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 but I wanted to ask you something so we can get back on topic. So, I would say another thing that we can definitely look into. So, I'm going to ask you, Whiplash, what trade offs are you willing to make for that success and what will that success possibly cost you and others in your life? I'll give up my left testicle. Oh my God. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh man for a better you job your that pays nut. better you're gonna sacrifice your left nut okay <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, respect I... you <laughs> it's whatever you want hey I'm fine with giving up my balls that make me less horny <laughs> what oh my god <laughs> oh my god hey we're this is just <laughs> okay oh. back on the subject okay <laughs> Uh, sacrifices. Laughing in the back. Sacrifices, you say? I mean, sacrifices pretty much just have to go out and do it. Like maybe it'll take away some of your free time for doing fun stuff, like on your own terms, or like something you need to actually go out and do. Like it's something that will take that you don't want to do, but it's something you have to do to actually push yourself forward in the future. Because haven't mm -hmm. you guys ever had that, that feeling where you don't want to do something, but you have to do it because you have to in order to get the thing you want to do? Yeah, you're, you know, having a yeah. full-time job to pay off your car that you bought. Yeah, yeah this is but called... I can afford it. <laughs> this is called having responsibility. Being an adult sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it does sometimes. It really does. <laughs> but yes. I, yeah, I know what you mean, though. I have to do that at my job. That's, I'm actually going to... I have a CDL license, and I'm going to go back to school to acquire three more um, licenses, pretty much. There's a hazmat, like hazardous, or like fuels, chemicals, stuff like that. Tandem, which is double trailers or three trailers. There's a third one, just can't remember what it is. I think it's for... There's something I can't remember. I think it's, you can get one for, like, manual transmissions, too. Because most semis now are automatic. Hmm. Oh, fair enough. Me, um... I'm gonna... I want... I, I, again, uh, I really want to get a child of my own. And if it requires more meeting, 
uh, writing interviews, writing more documents, saving money, having to tighten my belt for another year or two, and eating PB&J sandwiches to save a bit of money, I'm going to do it. If it requires me to do overtime at work, I will do it. If it requires me to make sure that my business thrives so that we can pay off our debt and be in a better financial do it uh, situation, I will do it. Because I really want to get this, and like I'm the more time we wait the more difficult it is because i am 31 but my hus husband is turning 40 next year so he's starting to be a bit late for you know having your first child because if you think about it if we have a he if you have a child when he's 40 and he's eight he's turning 18 when he's 58 which is really close to your retirement so we want to make sure that the kids are out when you retire so this is we're dealing with a bit of a time constraint but we'll figure it out i mean there's nothing we haven't handled there's there's no situation that we were not able to handle i would say for me like there's a couple of things i want to do and i'm already doing one of those things which is i have a full-on schedule like i'm constantly busy like outside of here and i am doing what i can to put myself in a position where i can live comfortably financially and, and i don't really necessarily have to rely on people to make me feel comfortable because I don't like being a reliability in that regard. So yeah, I'm going to school and you know, I'm pursuing bachelor's degree and yada yada, get experience in that kind of field. Another thing that I wanted to do, which was I'm, I will be, it's gonna be the downside of this and it's gonna take a lot of time and the, the cost that it comes with is a lot of patience because I still had to get through, you know, putting myself in a position where I'm comfortable with the previous first thing so i know that me and my boyfriend want to live together i'm at an age like it's getting close to me wanting to move to that next level if you catch my meaning yeah that is but that requires a lot of patience and a lot of time to build up the relationship to get to that point so keep that in mind like if you want to have a next level relationship understand that it takes time and patience and make sure that if you're going to do that make sure you are comfortable first <laughs> Another very, very important point is that if you start living with somebody, when you start living with somebody with your partner, this is when you're going to have to learn to compromise and adapt to each other. And communication is going to be the most important thing. There's no such thing as like, you're being mad. And he's like, what's going on, babe? And you're like, oh, nothing. That doesn't fly. That does not work. You need to learn to communicate and compromise with each other. I wish you the best. I hope it really happens for you. Because, like, once you figure stuff mm -hmm. out and you get that first year of adjustment, after that, it goes really well, and it's really fun. I want to clarify one thing so I don't want people to confuse. Not, I'm not talking about just living with him. I'm talking about the next level after that. I'm, I'm talking about being in your position because I'm almost at that age <gasps> where I show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's that, but then that's like years of preparing, but you get the point. Um, I want to skip back on topic and go back to Whiplash and saying, uh, what are the pros and cons of striving for those uh, goals? Do you sometimes think the outcomes, do you sometimes think of the outcomes of the future? Yes. Mm -hmm. The pros, okay, so pros of going for what you want to go for is you will finally be able to achieve what you've always dreamed of doing. The cons is it's kind of hard to get there, but you have to push yourself through those barriers to be able to do it. Like no matter what it is, it's either school, maybe your job you're trying to move up in the company you're with, maybe it's um, a hobby that you're trying to get better at. Like maybe guitar, maybe art drawing, maybe just anything anything requires you know m uh, motivation on yourself to actually do it mm -hmm. and that takes a lot I, from your from a person fair enough now i think what the hardest part the pros is definitely that it's right there in front of you you have the internet you have many sources that you can look into to to build up the skill of whatever you're trying to do so you can take some time. You don't have to necessarily go to school. You can also learn it on your own. Um, another thing, but the big downside I've seen with the con is that it's not really so much 
the skills and the research you have to do. It's just the will to do it every day. And that's a personal thing with you as a person. Well, it depends on the goals you're, you're trying to reach. Reach for me, my for my situation is I need to gather up money. So the cons for achieving that goal is that I'm gonna have to make sacrifices. I'm gonna have to stop going out. But it's important to keep the bigger picture in mind and not forget what's up ahead. What's your target? What's the uh, what's the mountain you're trying to mm -hmm. climb? Uh, but again, Listen, look. looking at the top of the mountain can be very overwhelming. So at the same time, like celebrate all the tiny little milestones that you achieve on your path going all the way to the top of that mountain. Don't forget to do that. If you're definitely going to climb something, make sure you don't climb the ladder with your kilt again. Yeah. <laughs> make sure nobody's uh, not. I'm not climbing too much of a steep angle and there are not people behind me. <laughs> oh, in for a surprise. Oh, man. <laughs> They're so comfortable think... to wear, though. They're so nice. I like well, yeah, that. when you're not wearing underwear, it's comfortable. <laughs> Always going to be comfortable. It is. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to ask you this, Whiplash. What determines success? Do you think it's talent, effort, motivation, or luck? All three. I it's said absolutely four, all three. not three. <laughs> all, all of that case. I heard luck, motivation, talent. and that. talent. Talent, other one? effort, motivation, luck. Okay, I see. I didn't hear effort. But yes, all four of them. It takes all four of them. It, like, you need a little piece of it. It's like, the, it's like the chemicals used to make the Powerpuff Girls. You need a little bit of everything to make them right. Yeah, mm -hmm. just a little bit of it's, everything. Uh, it's a little bit of everything. Luck, because to be fair, everything requires luck sometimes. <laughs> effort, that's how you begin it motivation you have to have the motivation to want to begin it effort is just with the motivation and then talent is something you strive for and that's what comes along with what you go for or what you're trying to accomplish you want some motivation whiplash coffee is your motivation coffee does nothing for me anymore it just tastes good Oh, it does? it does? Okay. Okay, never mind. Well, when you have ADHD, <laughs> caffeine doesn't speed you up. It just makes you more focused. It doesn't make me want to run like a marathon or anything. When I drink coffee, I feel more present. I'm more aware. I'm, I'm more focused on things. That's what I've noticed with people that have ADHD when they drink coffee versus not having ADHD and drinking coffee. And people are going to be like super hyper and stuff. Me, I'm just like dead on focus. So it's really so a little important. Not me, though. I'm learning something new. And it's topic. fine. So oh, it's fine. With caffeine for me, though, one day I had two bang energies, which is 300 milligrams a piece. I had a coffee, which is for a large cup of coffee, is about 250 milligrams of caffeine. <sighs> and then I went to the gym and I took some pre workout. And I'm not sure how much caffeine it is, but it's a lot of caffeine. How is your heart still functioning? Yeah. I don't I know anymore. That. It's, it's like, <laughs> my heart is functioning because of, oh, oh my god. god. I can't think of the word. I try thinking of the word and then my brain just stops working on me. It despises no. me. It's working off despising. Or That's not the right one word. More thing, one more thing before we get back on topic. <laughs> I wanted to say this. Who do you think is the most himbo? Me, Whiplash, or Stream? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty god. I think we leave all... A, leave a comment down below in the description. <laughs> We all got I'm our pretty... himbos at moments. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at it. <laughs> all right, I mean... so back on the topic of hand. Now, in terms of what I think, yes, I do agree with you, Whiplash. It is definitely all four. It is a little bit of a mixture of four, but I would also say that I didn't think about is like not only the luck, I think this does fall under the luck, but it's also about who you know, and I think that still kind of falls under luck as well. Oh, yeah, if you have if you... like... Con like... What's the word called? If you have uh, connections. Yes, that's very luck. <laughs> that's pretty much luck. The motivation is like, yes, I am ready to go. I'm ready to go do whatever I want to do, whether it's learning to do this or that or wanting to put physical exercise into me. So or having the effort to <laughs> do whatever, like stuff like that. The effort is just in the moment doing it whatever that is and the talent i would i would argue talent can be off a little bit because i always said talent does not beat hard work 
I think my take on these, all these four, all of these are important. To me, talent is how easy some of the steps are going to be. Effort is how much time and energy you're going to need to put into the thing that are difficult. Motivation is what is going to keep you going. And luck is what's going to give you some shortcuts to achieve your end goal. To me, the most mm -hmm. important thing, in my opinion, is motivation. And every Every time I had hurdles in my life, uh, when I wanted to go to university, study to be a, a robotician, uh, work in aeronautics, the, the one thing that always made me fail was lack of motivation. And when I work on my first suit the first time, I've, I've hit a few hurdles and I was lacking the talent and I needed more effort. But watching those uh, convention montage videos on YouTube was really the thing that got me like going and motivated it back on track and I would overcome those hurdles. And, you know, I made my first suit 12 years later. I still got it. It's old. It needs a bit of work, but it's still there. <laughs> on a side note, we could also just put like a fishing pole that's holding like a jar of peanut butter in front of his face and I'll get him moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you. I'll, I'll be moving a lot quicker if you give me a, a can of maple syrup. Just saying. I love that stuff. I put in my coffee every morning. How stereotypical <laughs> of your own culture. Anyways. Peanut butter crackers for me, though. Fair enough. But anyways, guys, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell. When you hit that notification bell, it will alarm you for our upcoming videos and our upcoming shorts. Follow us on our audio platforms and leave us a rating as that will help us out a lot. Join our Discord and our Telegram chat. Links for all these are on the link tree down below in the description. Hey Top Dogs fans, are you ready for an elevated fan experience? Discover exclusive perks by joining our server subscription on Discord or Patreon. For $2.99 a month, become a pod supporter unlock raw unedited podcast episodes access supporter meetups and receive a unique custom pie emoji among other special goodies craving more then level up for a podcast supporter plus for 5.99 participate in episode voting share your feedback and experience the excitement of being in our live audience plus get an insider's peek at our upcoming plans and merchandise remember your support is the fuel to our fire and while these subscriptions are optional they significantly help us grow so join us now and let's make top dog's journey even more phenomenal together yeah yeah now i'm surprised whiplash you didn't go up to the camera and wanted to say something and eh, not this time this time they can they survive this round i mean i think you I should threaten the camera with there's a new I weapon going give you on an right option now. you go over there Aww. <laughs> no, <laughs> he went in the corner that failed. But I was gonna do Whip Flash. But anyway. you're gonna threaten the camera. I think you should use this trending new weapon. It's called the megaphone. I think you should use that. Apparently, but anyway, <laughs> if you have nothing to say, that's oh that. That's fine. That's fine. You don't need to say something. I'll say can... something right now. If you guys do not subscribe to this YouTube channel, what is this? That's a phone. You better subscribe to our YouTube channels and our podcasts on Spotify, and Apple, Google, and whatever the other platforms are. Find you on Twitter, or X as it is now. <laughs> now I'm going to cancel you. I'm just going <laughs> to start spreading rumors about you because you are not following us. So get ready for it. Oh. Ready for the oh. big shit storm. <laughs> Brace I'm, gonna, yourself. I'm gonna post this, this on my Google Amazon. forms and just show it to everybody. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. And then, and then your Google form gets reported for defamation. Great, good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back to it, guys. Yeah, Why do you yeah, have a gun? That was a fun bit. Wait, is the gun out? I thought I turned it off. No, you still got your gun. Wasn't that from uh, Mass Effect? It looks like a gun from Mass Effect. It kind of does. It is. Oh, I love that game so much. Oh, uh, yes, I'm going to do what I can. Anyways, let's get back on topic. But before I was about to say that, I was about to say, Sakura, your arm was dead there for a moment, but you got it back. Good job. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, you were drinking water? Okay. All right. Oh, okay. So back on topic. Now we're going to start with Whiplash again. 
your ears disappeared for a moment, but they caught me off guard. Do you re- do you remember do you remember a time when you have won or made an achievement that boosts you and gain confidence? Losing weight. <laughs> to be honest. I, I will say that I feel like that for anyone that is a human being. Losing weight is such a confidence booster because you feel so much better about yourself. Like, even in, like, the appearance department, you feel you look better, your body feels better, you just feel like you want to do more because your Mm -hmm. body isn't, like, overburdened with, like, all the fat that you used to have inside of it. I mean, I used Mm -hmm. to be 250 at one point, so... (laughs) For someone your height, that is definitely abnormal. So uh, yeah, two fifty four five seven five eight. <laughs> you just you just call out my husband right now. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Sorry for the wait. You... <laughs> wait what? Wow. You're, you're... Good job, wait. Vixen. <laughs> He's shorter than your husband. But How I am you? driven your husband five eight. My husband is five eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, never mind. But wow. here's the thing is, here's the difference though. Your, like, your husband, funny. No, no, your husband's a chef. That makes sense. Oh, but that doesn't so help good. the case. But anyway, stop. Let's just stop. <laughs> <laughs> just stop. Just, wait, I'll just get back to what you were saying originally. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Well, I mean, perfect. That's a himbo moment right there, ladies and gentlemen. That was the perfect one. Please leave two thumbs up down below. (laughs) Or just calm and musky husky. That's what I am. Yeah. Anyways, yes, you are. I mean, go back to what you were saying. It's true, though, isn't it? I mean, you used to be bigger when you were younger, too, right? I'm still a big guy. I'm like, I'm actually 250. D six. Yes, but it's more muscles than fat, though, isn't it? Most, yeah. Yeah, see, no. but don't you remember a time when your fat was more than your muscles? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. Okay, well, I mean, it was just me then. I look used to look like a barrel, honestly, just like a big old human barrel. That's what I used to look like. I still have pictures. Send it to me on my old self. <laughs> I will. I'll put in the. I'll put in the top. Top. Yeah. The Telegram or Discord group. It is all right. Um, Can I interrupt you for one second? If yeah. that's okay. Now, if you guys want to know to see that picture, the picture is already updated. You just need to go look at one of our episodes where we talk about fitness. That's where that picture is. Go ahead. Oh yeah, that's right. I mean. Oh. I just feel good about it, but that's to me mm-hmm. what an accomplishment is. Okay, and you felt good, like you had the motivation to go do other things in your life. Yeah, like I said, that was a time where I wanted to do uh, content creation too. Now that's just like, I get mm-hmm. kind of tired of it, so now I'm just relaxing from it. But mm-hmm. it's going to the gym though. Going to the gym still requires an immense amount of motivation to do it. Because now you're going to work out your body without getting paid. <laughs> you're just doing it for your own self at that point. But it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Me, I think um, my last time I've won or had a really massive boost and in, in gain in confidence was right before we. I was taking the uh, doing the road trip to FWA. My car had a failed AC system in it. And I'm a stereotypical winter type of guy from Canada, and I cannot deal with wee heat. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be driving 40 hours in this tin box and deal with this heat. So I've decided to tackle the project of fixing the AC system in my car. I know it can be extremely expensive. We're talking about anywhere from 2 to 4K to fix. And I ended up finding a kit on the internet for uh, $400 with the radiator oil compressor and everything. And it took me four hours of my day, a few cans of refrigerant, and I actually made it. I fixed, this, I fixed my car AC system. And I don't know if you remember, but at FWA, I think for two days, I was like, dude, I still feel awesome and feel great about the fact that I managed to fix my AC system and fix $2,000 mm-hmm. $2, worth of like repairs and stuff. That was a big win. I still feel proud about it like months later. Yeah, that's great. Now, with all these things that come to mind with these guys who gave their examples, now, I will say what it comes down to is self-discipline. 
because if you and what i mean by that is like if you're going to have to work on the ac unit or if you're going to have to go to the gym it does require some type of self-discipline where you're going to need some patience to do whatever you need to do and do some research okay like you can't sure just did. go you can't just go balls to the wall into like trying to fix the ac unit without trying to have some type of knowledge or even some type of guidance to help you through it and along with working out you do need a diet plan and all that stuff now i let you guys figure that out on your own if you no guys cookies. whatever you're trying to do yeah no cookies sweets no are carbs, my downfalls no sugar uh, carbs don't care sweets are sweets are my downfalls oreos chips ahoy that's fair cookies in general but, sweets buttercream chocolate cake <laughs> all that is like my downfall it's so delicious I don't you know, know what kind of cake you be eating. <laughs> I tend to, my problem is I tend to dive too quickly into a project and think I know how to do it and I ended up causing more harm than good. Uh, ended up failing the, the project system, because of it. Yeah, and it, the, 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 the project fails and then I'm like, oh my god, I'm so stupid. Why didn't I look it up? Why didn't I look online? This wonderful platform where all the information is avail available for us and I didn't do it. Uh, um, I didn't do my research, but um, I'm glad I did. I followed all the, t all the steps, and I managed to get through. There were some moments I got really impatient, but I kept thinking about the end result, and I plowed through. And honestly, it's it's great. It's it's fun to give yourself a challenge once in a while. It makes life exciting. It makes you proud of yourself, and it really is a big booster for your self-esteem, which I'm all about. You guys know that already. So, yeah, it's give yourself a challenge once in a while. You'll be surprised. And if you don't know what to do, ask your friend what they do for hobbies, what they like to do on the weekends when they're not talking about furries or, you know, doing other st stuff. Whiplash likes to fix cars and ride them. Uh, Whiplash um, Fiction wants to write a book. Uh, he goes to the gym. I have a thousand hobbies I could talk to hours about, but find a little something to get interested and involved. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. For me, I would say one of the things I have won and made an achievement <laughs> is definitely would be that time where I got, uh, it was actually not that too long. It was like a few months before, and it was like way before FWA, but I had straight A's in my first semester ever. That, I've never had that in my life. So yes, I'm very happy about that. And it definitely boosted my GPA up and I just was, I was coming into FWA with very happy. That did help out oh, yeah, a lot. Anywhere. Yes, that was great. The only thing that I will say, though, is that if you're going to, whatever you're doing, and especially in college, it's, it's a lot of effort to study as long as I do. But don't let that stop you from trying, because I believe you can do it. But anyways, I was going to ask you something else, Whiplash. What do you say to people who have failed but haven't experienced success yet? Keep trying. <laughs> That's the best way to put it, yes. But... <laughs> That's a simple way of putting it. Um, I mean, you're all, you're always gonna run into failures. There's no perfect like. There's never gonna be a like perfect like part in your life where everything just goes your way. You're always gonna have your failures, and you just gotta do better. That's all you really can do. Just keep at it. I mean, I've what? failed so much in some things, especially with cars sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or going to what the about gym. <laughs> What about things like maybe outside of cars at the gym? Maybe that's something that you have never discussed before. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'll say this. Something actually I actually haven't really talked about too much. When I first started doing like content creation, I was staying on VR chat more than I was actually spending time with my real life friends. And now being off it for a bit now, like only getting on every once in a while, I realized that I missed out on quite a few things, my real life friends, because I spend more time playing a video game and socializing with them. Like people that, to me at least, matter the most. Mm -hmm. the word of the I'm not sure if I answered his questions, but <laughs> I, I think what you're I feel like. Okay. What I think you're trying to say is, is that it's you found more happiness when you decided to take a step back from virtual reality into actually spending real life time with your friends. 
and that made you happy and it boosted up your confidence and hell it probably gave you successful relationships with your friends i think that's what you're trying to say yes i've been much more happier like spending time with my IR friends like i'm happy with you guys like mm-hmm. you guys for sure and very few other people but my real life friends i get to see them i get to drive to their house and just see them personally when i want to and i pretty much do that like help i live with roommates but i will go stay at my friend's house like maybe two or three times a week just to hang out watch youtube poops or just some car video on youtube or king of the hill youtube poops you don't know what those that? are mm-hmm. oh my god <laughs> Street. I've um, I've heard about it, but I'm not sure either. So I'm on that nah. side. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of that. Jesus, that is, <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is that is him. That's Sambo moment right there. That like that's like golden age YouTube. Oh, you okay. still it, it rings a bell, but I don't remember exactly. I'd have to look it up, but it rings a bell. I'm dead brain right There's now. There's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of good ones. We'll talk about that later, um, outside of the recording. But for me, at least, I would say people who have failed, it's, and I'll be, and I'm going to be real with you people. When you fail, it happens more times than you can count. (laughs) You are not going to see many successes, and that's just the reality of it. But that does not mean you give up either. Now, that is the reality that you do have to accept. You're going to have more failures than you do successes. But if you were to put like a number on it, let's say you did a thousand things, all right? Maybe about 10 of those things will be successful. But that's not saying that you can't do it. It's just a learning experience so to speak when the things that you fail at is a learning experience to lead to those 10 successes yeah my take on this is every failure will bring you closer to success and you need to learn from every single failure you need to ask your friends for help Try to do some in, uh, retrospect, introspection about yourself. Try to understand what you did wrong and what you can improve. And eventually, through those mistakes, you'll eventually succeed. You'll get there, but you have to keep going. And honestly, there's a lot of people that, you know, try to figure out their purpose in life. And they find they try to look for the ways to make themselves feel better. And I got to say that giving yourself a challenge and reaching that goal is the most fulfilling feeling you can ever feel. And it's it's empowering. It feels great. It's really good for your self-esteem as well. But trying to be a popular person on the Internet definitely doesn't have the same effect. Honestly, try to look for a goal and challenge yourself to do something that you've never done. Get out your comfort zone try something new and you'll see it can be quite an adventure (laughs) i will say though with the popularity it does have its benefits like if you have that audience behind you you can translate it and enter them into a way of like doing like introducing a new idea that you wanted to do right like how i used to do tiktok and yeah. how I want to like, yeah. push a project. That's a different thing. That's okay. That's a, a modest way of doing it. That's what I'm doing uh-huh. as well. Don't okay. get popular. I would say if you want to be successful at something, it comes with popularity. Okay, if you want to be known in the spotlight, like mm-hmm. people know you for something, then yes, of course. But I mean, just my take on it. I've been much. I feel I was much more happier when I was just like, I just another furry in the fandom. Mm-hmm. Just felt like, and what was it? There's just less stress on me. Well, because when you carry like when you carry popularity, you carry a certain um, what was it? You're supposed to carry a. I can't think right now. My brain is doing the dumb. <laughs> you carry a. Uh... You carry a certain aspect about you that you're supposed to be this person who's supposed to give out these wonderful advice to people. Like, I know you make, some people make gaming content, people make, like, life choices or, like, uh, hack life hacks and stuff like that, but 
It just comes with too much pressure on it, honestly. There's a reason why, like, a lot of people will just stop doing it, because it's just too much at one point. I will say, though, you have to be okay with those consequences that comes with it. And maybe that's just not you. I don't know. Well, I never tried to use... Like, I just wanted to make videos for fun. I didn't even never thought in my life that popularity well, will come with it. Yeah, I, what I'm saying is that whatever, whatever you're trying to do in your life to be successful at, and you're trying to bring your community to look at that other idea that you want to do, you know... It, it and it's gonna take some time because they're not used to that kind of content, right? But you yeah. have to be okay with being in the spotlight all the time, I and you have to understand content. <laughs> that's fair. But you have to be okay knowing that you're in the spotlight all the time, and you're trying to show them this new project, and you just definitely got to find more balance in your life. It's a and balance in your life is very good, and also having the balance of what you need to do. It's it's also very good. You win in both cases to kill two birds. I think we're drifting. Stone. I think we're drifting up subject though. By the way, <laughs> we need to come back because oh god, <laughs> I fell back. Oh my god, sorry. Okay, I will say this: <laughs> the spotlight I enjoy is doing the podcast with you guys. This is the one thing I enjoy doing. It's nice, chill. We have to enjoy talking to each other and just give out good advice. That's what I like doing. Okay. I think me, me like there's this guy on YouTube that I follow. Um, I name I think his his name is Mike. He in every single video he does, he tries to learn a new skill. He wants to learn how to solve a Rub Rubik's cube. He wants to learn on how to deep dive and hold his breath for six minutes. He wants to learn how to ride a unicycle. There's a bunch of people that do fun challenges like this. That if you don't know what to do and you want to keep yourself busy with the project. You can look up YouTube on different challenges you can learn. I wanted to learn how to ride a unicycle, and I did. It took me six hours. I learned. I wanted to learn to be a fire breather. It took me a few minutes. I looked it up. Uh, I, don't, I don't recommend you do that, by the way. It's very dangerous, and make sure you, you know exactly what you do. Do your research first before trying out, out you know, out just quickly. And like have that. a trainer. <laughs> I have somebody, I was sitting by the edge of my pool when I was doing it. So in case something had fire, I could just flip backward and I was safe. And I had a towel and I wet my face. But that's beyond the point. Um, there's so many things you can do out there. And, and I, we drifted off into the popularity thing. But please don't make that as a challenge for yourself. Do something that is more fulfilling, that will bring you more in life, that will give you that sense of satisfaction and self-worth. Um, try to improve your friend and one thing I like to tell people is what do you want to be remembered for and if you want to be remembered as a funny guy that can do a bunch of things and learn how to do backflips and do things I mean there's a bunch of things man I'm just talking about this stuff and I'm smiling <laughs> it's very fun he smiles like a dork by the way he does. Yeah, my avatar doesn't portray how, how wide my grin is right now but I'm working on that <laughs> but anyways <laughs> I would say okay. another thing. Uh, hmm. Nah, that's what Scream said. Like working on working on cars make me the smiling idiot until it doesn't go my way. <laughs> wow, what a <laughs> what a baby. <laughs> uh, well, because then it turns into like ten problems instead of one. <laughs> Fair enough. Now I'm gonna. I know we have a few questions that I could ask, but I'm gonna just go with one more. Because okay. of time. But anyway, so I want to let's switch it around a little bit. I'm going to focus on stream on this one. So looking back at your failures, what did you learn from it? Oh, my God. That's a tough one. Um, never give up. That's one thing. Never give up. And accept the fact that you will do mistakes over and over again and sometime mm -hmm. it will be the same goddamn mistake and you've forgotten about it but please don't bash yourself over the head with these issues too much try to not lose like your goal what it is it's okay to have setbacks but please don't wail on yourself i don't know how to explain to say this give yourself mm -hmm. a chance and you know, what I've learned from all my failures, it's sometimes it's good to take a break. You know, put that aside, put that in a container, a project you're working on, an electronic circuit, whatever. Put that in a bin, give it a few days, and come back 
to it and sometimes you'll have those eureka moment and you'll figure out exactly what you need to do and you will be like oh my god why did i not think about this so if you think that things are not working out take a break there's nothing wrong with that and ask your friends too like i for my content i do on tiktok i go to my friends i'm like hey i have this idea for a video i'd like to make what do you think and i ask a lot I ask questions because I have a perspective on something. The eight people around me kind of have a different perspective. So mm -hmm. ask for help. And there's nothing wrong about that. There's no shame about it. And, you know, it, it might help to reinforce some friendship and, you know, build bonds with people and you'll come back to it. And maybe there's some people that will bounce in and try to join on your project. So, yeah, that's that would be my advice. Be patient, My, take a break, ask for help. E. My advice would be is this. If you have an end goal, and whatever that end goal is, you definitely should write it down. Now, and definitely do it by a step-by-step -step process. It's one thing where you have a goal, and you're doing that, but you're overstepping other steps Different to get steps. to that end goal. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, you know what I meant. <laughs> but yeah, Just made you, it clear. <laughs> so yeah, Sorry. like for example, yeah, if you want to, like, if whatever your end goal is, definitely do the baby things, baby steps before you reach the end goal. That would be my advice because I have a tendency for just overstepping things to reach my end goal, and it turns out to be a crappy product. Oh, now, that's just something I have worked on. <laughs> but yeah, that would be my advice. What about you, Aplash? Oh, white man. Uh, mine would Whoops. be to take your time. <laughs> mine, would, mine would be take your time. Because if you do take your time, you will make less mistakes. But regardless, you will make mistakes anyways. Because we all make mistakes. We're all human beings. But the more you do it, the less mistakes you'll make. But then when you get to the end and you make that success, it's going to feel so good. So all you got to do is just keep going at it. Never give up on what you're going for. And in the long run, instead of it being a mistake, it's going to be a win. <laughs> I love that. What I find about this whole thing adorable on Whiplash's part is the fact that he was struggling to say some words. <laughs> giving his point. It was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, have anything else to say? Nope, I'm all good. All right. Never give you up. Too, Never give up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna give you up. There you go. Use that your motivation. <laughs> Never gonna turn around and desert you. We'll see guys, you guys we next you. week. You can do this. <laughs> we'll see Sorry, you guys next week on the episode. <laughs>